What's up fam? It's your boy Darkstep here and today we've got a brand new game we are going to be playing. It is Valheim. Now I have gone through, I've done the first five bosses that are available in the game, I've had a ton of fun with it, and now I've decided that I want to make a new series for the YouTube. So that's where we are today. We're going to be starting a brand new game with a brand new character. So, a uh, new character, uh, male, go with that, no hair, that's what I like. Let's go with a nice beard here, that's a good one, long one, yeah, I think long one is the way to go. Well, that's what we're going to do, look at that. Uh, hair tone, and blondness, there we go, nice and black and perfect. So, we are going to be dark step. Boom, there we are. So we're gonna start our worlds. We're going to do new, start server. So for anyone that actually wants to do their own server, you just do start server, uh, put in a password. You have to put this in every time that you play on the server and it'll actually show up in your worlds here. But for mine, obviously this isn't. So I'm gonna do a new world. We're going to call it YouTube. And that's a random seed that we're gonna be using. And here we go, boom. So, uh, game is a ton of fun. It's like a lot of other games where you start out with nothing and you start with sticks and stones, working up to tin and bronze and copper uh, and then iron and silver and then the end game material, which is black metal right now. So that's gonna be the goal of this series. Uh, there will be two of us playing. Uh, only one of us will be recording uh, for YouTube. So it'll only be me doing it. Uh, we are gonna be having separate bases and PvP will be turned off, but uh, if it's something we want later, we can always turn it on again later. But for now, this is what we got. This game is still in early access on Steam if you want to buy it for yourself. It is, I believe, uh, $20 on Steam, but here's the uh, beginning credits here. Now each world in this game is going to be procedurally generated, uh, so no two maps are going to be the same. So you'll see the only different or the only similarity between all worlds is that you start in on this uh, bird, uh, Hugin I believe is the bird's name, and you fly for about 30 seconds before being dropped off at the starting altar, where if you do happen to die, you do get sent back here. Now, later in the game, and I don't mean much later, you will be able to craft a bed for yourself, which you will be able to use as your new spawn point, which is pretty cool. So you're gonna be starting out here. Hopefully there's gonna be no troll or something uh, waiting for us as soon as we drop. That would be very bad. I have seen that happen before. And... Looks like we're okay. And for anyone playing this worlds on their own, this guy here, you go over talk and talk to him, Hugin. He'll give you some words of wisdom and go through all that stuff. I won't be doing that because I've already done it on two uh, two worlds actually. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to be ignoring him. Um, but I will be giving the tips that he gives with you guys as well. So when you first log in here, you're going to be at this area with five standing stones, and you're going to notice each one has a hook and a sacrificial stone. So the sacrificial stone, it just tells you some kind of tips or a little bit of a snippet about the boss, which is pretty cool. And then the trophy hook is where you actually put the boss's trophy after you beat him. And after you beat him, you're going to be opening up new powers. So for this first boss here, uh, you will be getting extra stamina for running and jumping, which is pretty cool. Now... You can only have one active at a time, so you, basically you, you would just walk up to it. When it's on there, you push E to um, accept the power, basically. And then there will be a little thing that shows up right down here beside the health bar. And that there is what is going to be showing you when that power-up is ready. 
all of them are the same. It's a 20 minute cooldown with five minute use. So all in all, it's pretty cool. Uh, you're gonna wanna use them in their own rates. Each one of them is good. And that's what we got. So right now, just gonna get rid of the bird. You're gonna wanna click on this here. This shows you where the first boss is, Ikther. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but whatever. And it'll actually mark that on the map. Now be careful you don't right click it because if you do, that will delete it. So you can just read it again. Uh, in order to put down markers in this game, you can choose between the five different symbols here. So for instance, if I had a house here, I could put it here. Oh, hold on. Gotta fight this guy first. And that sound you heard was a critical hit. When you hear that high uh, sound, it's because the enemy is staggered. So we'll get into more of the staggering tips later. Uh, but for right now, we're back in the map. So I put my house here, and then I want to name it Home. Uh, I can do that. Uh, at any time, I can also right-click it to remove it, or middle mouse button to ping. And you actually see that ping in the world, and it shows you which way you want to go. Okay? So that's the first little thing. Uh, you're going to be wanting to pick up sticks and wood off the ground. You can also run over to the smaller trees... Um, here's some here. And you can just sit here and punch these trees a couple times. i got to wait for my stamina, which is the yellow bar in the bottom middle of my screen. And then you can just sit here and punch a tree a couple times. Uh, a lot of times. There we go. And that'll give you resin and wood. Uh, resin is really good in this game. So you're going to want to make sure you hang on to that. Because most of your uh, lighting sources at your house or base are going to be primarily using resin as the material that you'll want to be keeping that going with. So, after you've collected all your stuff, uh, we will just... Uh, yeah, nothing we can make right now, but these are basically what you're going to want to make. Uh, the stone axe is for cutting down trees. The club is what you're going to want to use for a weapon. And the hammer is what you're going to use for your building. Now... The, the stone axe and the stone club actually have the same stats. So slash 15 uh, for the axe uh, and the club is blunt 12. So it's your, your axe is technically actually a better thing for weapon. Now the numbers on the left are what is going to be the, the optimal condition if your skill is high enough for it. So right now with an axe, I can realistically expect to do between four and eight damage. Um, and then as I level up, that number will change to like 5 and 9, 6 and 10. And you're always going to have a bit of a variation between those two stats. So that's where we are right now. I'm going to do a bit of resource gathering, get some tools, and we'll be right back. So I'm doing a bit of exploring. Uh, not a ton. I just kind of went up this way, found an actual place where you can summon the first boss as well. Uh, make sure when you are going across mushrooms, uh, any types of berries, that you are picking those up as well. And I think here is a good little place to make our first house. So we're going to build up here. I chose this here because building on the water is a very smart idea. Because the water has a lot to do with this game. Now this is the world. This is how huge the world is. And zooming in here, this is what we've done. So, not a lot. Um, so I do strongly recommend going on the water and building somewhere here. You don't have to build right on the water, but just remember, if you build it 100 feet that way, every time you want to go somewhere, you got to walk 100 feet this way and 100 feet back. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing that. So, <laughs> pardon me, we did build our first set of tools here. Um, Flint is very important in the early game, so you're going to want to make sure you pick that up. And you're going to find that on the coastlines. Uh, it looks exactly like this. It's kind of like a white rock. Just pick it up. Go right in your inventory. You will need quite a bit of that in the early game, but in the late game, it is a non-existent item that you will not need whatsoever. Uh, I got a couple necktails here from killing some of the enemies. Uh, they're pretty, like, primarily they go along the coast. They're little tiny green lizard guys. Uh, very easy to beat. I also did find a pack of boars right over there. Uh, there was a two-star boar. We'll get into a little bit more about the leveling system later, but 
for now, all you need to know is the more stars that something has, the harder it is to be destroyed. I'm going to get that glare out of there. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use our axe and just chop some trees. Now anything in this first row on your hotbar, you can just push the number keys and... Oh, here's some combat here. Boom. So you can just push the number keys, switch b between whatever you want, and that'll allow you to do it. I would recommend using the club at the beginning of the game as opposed to just the axe for hitting enemies because the club is a very, very good item for mid and late game. So in the swamp, the club is by far the best thing to use on the boss. Any of the skeletons, any of the blobs, uh, it just it does so much damage. So it would be really worthwhile to get your skills up now. Because if you click on skills, you can see, like we have, we worked on some of the skills here. Uh, this orange bar at the bottom, it slowly goes up when you're swimming, and it gets to level 1. Why the levels are important uh, for something like a melee weapon is the higher your skill is, the more damage you're going to be able to do. So, like when I first got this club, it said on there I could do between... Or the axe, was it? I can't remember. Yeah, it was 3 to 7, or 3 to 6 on the club, so now it's 3 to 7, so... I believe it's actually gone up a little bit. I think it was 3 to 6. I could be mistaken. But every time you level up, your damage is going to be going up with it. Uh, with your blocking, you're going to be able to block more damage. Uh, it will also use less stamina. So it's a huge benefit. Running the difference between you know 0 and 100 for your level is when you're at 0, you run very slow. This is as fast as you can run. Or you could actually take off the axe and run a little bit faster. Uh, when you're at level 100, it's going to use a lot less stamina, and it's going to, which means you can go further, and it's going to mean that you can move a little bit faster as well. So also to keep in mind, you do run quicker when you don't have a weapon out as opposed to when you do have a weapon out or wearing armor. So on here, the armor doesn't actually hurt me at all, because uh, it doesn't actually say that there's a speed loss on it. But on the bottom of this one here for the club, you can see that it says movement speed minus 5%. Now that only applies when the club is actually out. And if you just have your club, it's not a big deal. But when you start having full sets of armor that each have a 5% loss, and potentially a tower shield that has 20% loss, you're going to be moving very slow. With that said, let's start chopping down some trees. So just get out your axe, start hitting some trees, and go from there. When you first start, you will be able to chop down, I believe just beach maybe fir trees as well um, but when you start getting the flint axe and the uh, bronze axe and stuff like that you do open up higher tees uh, higher tiers pardon me and you're gonna want every one of the feathers that you find so if a tree drops feathers or resin make sure you pick it up and just keep smacking it till it falls over you do need to be very careful when a tree falls because it can fall on you and it will end your day. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, these seeds are very good, the beech seeds here. Uh, because basically when you get to the part, uh, Bronze Age I believe is when you can get the cultivator. That's where you can actually start farming your stuff. Because as I'm sitting here, you know, clearing out all these trees to make way for my house, uh, I'll obviously need the materials as well. What that's going to do is it's going to completely ruin the area where there's going to be no trees near me. And that kind of sucks. So you're going to want to have that available for you so that you can plant new trees around you and you don't have to go running for a mile to go get new trees. Really handy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to chop down some trees until I have enough for a house. And then we will be right back. All right, here we are here in the night time. I made a little enclosure because I wanted to make a workbench. So in order to make a workbench, bring out your hammer, uh, right click, that brings up this menu here that allows you to choose what you want to make. Before you can do anything, you're going to need a wor uh, workbench, which requires 10 wood. So you click on the workbench and then you can place it wherever. Now I obviously don't need another one, so what you can do is just middle mouse button, that gets rid of it, and you get every one of your resources back. So, put down a workbench, and then you need to build some walls around it with a roof. It doesn't need to have a front uh, covering. It used to only require one roof here, but now it actually requires two roofs. Um, I don't know if that was just a change in the game, or just 
unlucky for me the way that it spawned on the ground or whatever, but yeah. So in order to use the workbench, you walk up to it, push E to use it, and it shows you here all the recipes that you can have. Now you see this here has a little gold bo uh, border around it. Click on it, and it repairs your items for free. Pretty cool. So we're going to want to use some of this stuff here. Uh, first thing I'm going to want to use is I'm going to use this hoe here because our ground is not exactly the best. Um, you can kind of see like here is higher than here and then it gets you know high again here so we want to kind of flatten the land out so it's a nice place for us to live and it makes building a lot easier and cleaner because if you don't have flat land and you're placing your flooring down there's a good chance that some of the grass and, and the mud and stuff is going to actually go over top of your floorboard and you're going to see it and it's not going to look very good. So another thing to do is you can upgrade your stuff. So certain things are upgraded at the workbench, certain things are done at the forge. We'll get into the forge a little bit later when we get into the irons, um, metal, sorry. And all you have to do is click over an item and it shows you here in order to upgrade my hammer to quality two. It needs one wood, one stone, and a station level of number two. So we only have a station level of number one. We'll get into that a little bit more later. So the point of upgrading is uh, it will actually increase your durability as well as how much damage you do with a weapon. Um, it's like if it's an axe, you're going to be able to hit the tree for more damage, meaning you might be able to save yourself a swing or two in the long scheme of things, which saves stamina, which saves um, durability on your items. So a lot of things for that. So I just want to quickly show you that before we get started. And now it's time to build a house. All right. It's almost nice time, uh, nighttime again here. I uh, have done a bit of building, but that's not the focus of what we're looking at right now. So let me make sure I have this selected. I have the round pole fences. I have a little bit of a fenced off area here. And for anyone that's played the game probably knows why, but if you don't know, I'm going to show you. So we talked about the stars earlier and some animals oh, have higher stars than others. So you can get them to follow you. So let them get you. Get them to follow you, and then come in here. No, come on in. Come on in. Now he's trapped. So now, oh, that's only the one star one. And yeah, we'll get rid of him. I was hoping he was the two star guy. Just smack him a couple times, get his drops, got some leather scraps. So let's repeat the process here and see if we can get that two star guy. Where is he? <coughs> Pardon me. Gotta be very stealthy here. Find the right one. Ooh, one star, two star. You're no star, so you're no good to me. You're no good. Or trophy. Yeah. Where's the two star guy? There he is. So let's get rid of this one guy off on his own. So we don't need people tagging along. Sneak up on him a little bit. And smack him a couple times. Take a little bit of damage. No big deal. I'm going to eat a piece of food here just to keep my health topped up and make sure that they don't come after me. Let's come on. Where's, where's your buddy? Come on, buddy. You're not following. There we go. Now they're following. So let's run back to base. Stay a little bit ahead of them. Every time he attacks, just sprint a little bit. Make sure they're both following. Good, good. Whoa. This could be dangerous. Boom. They're both trapped in there. And this guy's gone. So you don't want to sit there and let him keep banging on things. So let's just throw some berries in there for him, keep him happy. And maybe let's repair the fence once here. Uh, they don't seem to be doing much damage at all, so that seems to be okay. So basically, you don't want them to see you, because if they see you, they're not going to calm down, basically. And they're just going to sit there and be angry and keep breaking at your fence. So you can see now, the icon over their head means that they're aware something is in the area, 
but they're not frightened, so they're not sitting there randomly, you know, hitting on things. And you see they just broke their status there, so that's perfect. They are now trapped, uh, which means we need to get more berries for them and go from there. So I'll kind of go in the house here. I haven't done anything with the interior yet. I just got the roof up here, got some campfires in, and I thought, hey, what a perfect time to go hunt some boar for food. And that's when I ran into those guys. So I figured that was a perfect opportunity for us. Whew, that's exciting. I've never captured boars before. Um, little tip for anybody that wants to kind of cheese a little bit. You can just sit here and sneak and walk towards the wall. You see your stamina at the bottom is going down, but your sneak is going up. So we're sitting here, even though they can't see us since they're so close, our sneak is going up. See, we just leveled up. So for anyone that's having a hard time leveling up sneak, you can do it um, without the mob even seeing you. So a little bit of a pro tip for you there. That's where we are right now, folks. I'm going to do a bit more resource gathering, and I'll be back with the next update. Looky, looky what we did. The boars love me. So yeah, basically once you get them in the pen here, uh, you're just going to throw in some berries or mushrooms. And you're going to be seeing these hearts periodically come up. It actually took about two in-game days to tame them. So that was a long time. Um, yeah, you can pet them. If these were wolves, you'd actually be able to have them switch between follow and stay. Unfortunately, the boars, they have a mind of their own and they kind of do whatever they want. So make sure you keep them in a uh, pen at all times. Otherwise, they're going away. Now, I have some berries here, and you keep seeing these hearts, so hopefully we will see a little baby come soon. And then uh, we'll be able to start our little farm. So yeah, the way it works is if a two-star boar goes with another two-star boar, you are guaranteed to get a two-star boar. Uh, same thing if you get two one-stars or two zero-stars. You're guaranteed to get whatever you get. Um, now, if you have a two star and a one star, it's 50% chance it's going to be a one star and 50% chance you're going to get a two star. So there's a little bit of luck involved, but once you get two uh, full grown two star boars, get rid of anything that is not a two star and then you have yourself a perfect farm. So yeah, very, very happy with that. I uh, did a little bit of exploring as well, as you can tell by the map. I started here, worked all the way around the coastline and all the way over here. And if you can believe it, we only got one queen bee. So, kind of sucks. We have all this stuff here. Obviously, it's not entirely full. This is the wood chest. This is the stone chest. Uh, this can be for random uh, crafting materials. Right now, we need quite a bit of flint, so that's what we're holding up there. Uh, this one is just going to be for seeds and stuff. I did manage to get some carrot seeds, which is ahead of where you should be able to get them. Uh, same with thistles and gray dwarf eyes, just because being a bit more experienced, I was uh, I felt a little safer going through the black forest, so that was okay. Got herself a little bit of money here. When we find the trader, we'll know what to do with that. Uh, one piece of honey, and then here's all the food. So blueberries aren't something that you should have at this point. It's not really a big deal, because you can get 15 health and 20 stamina from it. Uh, whereas you can get yourself some cooked meat for 40 health, 30 stamina, and some grilled necktail for 35 and 20. So uh, that really doesn't, it's not an advantage for anything. Uh, let's actually throw our berries in there. Uh, and then the last one here are for our trophies. Now to get the first boss, we're going to need two of these deer trophies. And there's two ways you can farm deer. Uh, you can go into sneak, walk up behind them, pull out your weapon, and then when you get nice and close behind them, bam, just give them a smack. Now you'll see this little arrow right here on the mini-map in the corner, that shows you which way the wind is blowing. So if I'm traveling in this direction towards a deer, they're going to be able to smell me. So that's going to scare them off from a further distance. Now if there was a deer over here, I'd be able to walk up right behind them and give them a smack. Now if they're looking at you, that doesn't count because obviously they can see you, but uh, as far as the scent is concerned, you always want to be hunting away from the wind, so that's pretty cool. And I don't see any real upgrades that I want to get at this point. Uh, flint knife is really good if you're doing the stealth method for um, anything really because it has a huge backstab uh, damage. 10 times. So you do 10 times regular uh, damage to an enemy that hasn't seen you yet. So 
That's really good if you're going for the stealthy route. I personally don't really play with much stealth throughout the game just because the game really isn't that hard once you know what you're doing. Like, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna die, you're gonna lose some skill, because every time you die, you do lose 5% of your skills. So I have already died once, so I have lost some of these skills, but it's really not too bad. Um, yeah. So right now, uh, I think the biggest thing I really want to work for is getting this crude bow. So let's see if we have the leather scraps for it. I don't think I do. I do. So let's make ourselves a bow. What do we need besides the scraps? We need 10 wood, which I do have in the chest. Let me just go get that. So here we go, folks. We are going to get our first bow of the game. And at this point in the game and its life, I would like to say bows are very overpowered. So getting a bow early on is something I do recommend. So you just sit there and hit the craft button. And if you decide to change your mind to mid craft, all you have to do is hit that craft button before it gets to the end again, and it will stop what you're doing. So that's pretty cool. So put the bow here. Now I do have some flint head arrows that I found in a chest. And in order to choose which arrows you're going to be using, all you have to do is just hover over the arrow and right click it. Otherwise it'll just pick one at random. So at the end of the game, if you have the best arrows, which in my opinion is the frost arrows, it could randomly shoot one if you haven't told it which one to shoot. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Also, look at that. Two little piggies. We got one two star, one one star. So basically when they both grow up, we're going to get rid of this one star, get rid of this one star. And then we will have perfect two stars and unlimited meat and uh, leather scraps for the rest of the game. We will not have to worry about that. Two things to talk about with the bow. First off, if you can upgrade it, you should. We need this first um, uh, crafting station upgrade, which we don't have yet. But the way to do that is you bring out your hammer and you go to crafting. And you see these little uh, stars in the top left corner? That mean that they relate to a specific uh, table. So these ones here, they tell you at the bottom, workbench improvement. So you need either one of these to make that. Um, and then when you do, you're going to get more recipes and stuff unlocked from your workbench. All right, people, this is where you don't want to be. We got the carrot seeds here, meaning we are in the Black Forest. You can actually check in the mini map in the top right corner and see that we are indeed in the Black Forest. So it's kind of going to run through here real quick. I'm trying to just explore the whole map. Uh, these are blueberries here. You can tell that they're blue and, and, and they're berries. Uh, I don't know what else needs to be said about that. Uh, but carrots, uh, blueberries, and uh, thistles are the three things that go in the black forest that isn't really anywhere else. And these are what the thistles are here. There we go. Uh, if you're looking for tin, this is what tin looks like here. It's always by the water. And copper is a little bit different. Alright folks, it's a little bit dark here. I was hoping to show you this without interruptions, but we found some skeletons. Uh, this is what copper looks like. You can kind of see some like little veins on the side. And most importantly, if you hover your mouse over it, you will see the words copper deposit. Now one thing to note, a lot of people when they're dealing with uh, copper especially. Copper is, is kind of like a ball, all right? Now you're only seeing the top of it on the outside. So what happens is you have to actually dig through this rock and then you have to start digging through the ground underneath exactly where this is here and you will find a much bigger deposit. So uh, you can see here another pro tip uh, is you can just kite pretty much any enemy in this game. Uh, wolves you cannot because uh, they are too fast, but most other enemies in the game you can just walk and then if they ever do get too close just hit sprint for a second, get them out of the range of the uh, whatever attack they're gonna do and you're good there. Do not get stuck in a tree like I did. <laughs> that is not a good idea, right? So very easy to kite people. Uh, but yeah, this is copper. So that's everything in the in the uh, black forest that you wouldn't uh, you shouldn't have access to yet, but 
if you're a little bit brave and you're okay with running from most things, this is a very sound uh, tactic to get you through. So I wouldn't recommend going into the swamp, uh, as the swamp has very, very hard hitting things. But for now, this is about the most that we can do. All right, you have done the impossible. You have managed to get yourself a full leather set of armor, including a deer hide cape. I also recommend uh, upgrading your crude bow to level two, just to do that little bit more damage. Now, I also have three different arrows right now. I have wood arrows, flint head arrows, and fire arrows. Fire arrows are going to be the best because they do pierce and fire, so they're going to actually do between 10 and 20 damage, whereas my flint head is only going to do between 8 and 16, so fire is a little bit better. Now, if it's raining, fire will not be better for the simple fact that the rain will put out the fire as it would kind of in, in real life, so yeah. So that's really all you need. I uh, don't really recommend getting super close to this uh, boss uh, as he does have some hard hitting hits uh, if you don't know how to deal with them yet. You could of course go and get yourself a shield and kind of shield his stuff that way but with your shield skill probably being super low at this point it's probably not something that's worth it for you. So we're just going to do this from afar and we're going to go. So you walk up to the mystical altar item here uh, it says offer item one through eight. So basically all I did was I put the deer trophies on my hotbar. I'm going to push number seven now and boom, that will summon the boss. Now you look where all these particles are going. They're going right over here uh, and that's going to show you where the boss is spawning. And here he is. Boom. First hit off on him. See how it's still hitting him for 2.5 damage every time? Oop. One thing I did forget, do not forget, eat your food, people. That will give you more stamina, more hits, more everything. Now, one thing you may not know with the bow, if you're shooting the bow but he starts charging at you and you need to run quick, just right click and that will cancel the bow without actually using an arrow. That one there you want to get out of the way from. There you go, and you can already see he's down to about a third health. It's a little bit hard with all this stuff in the way, the trees and everything, but yeah. Just make sure you watch out, because if they fall on you, they will do some damage, and you do not want that. And you sit here and keep pelting them. Get away, that's his AoE attack. go. That was his swiping attack. There we go. Just sit here and hit, and hit it a couple more times. Leveled up our bow. So that attack really doesn't do anything. It's not strong enough. He's actually pretty weak. His moves look like they would hurt a lot more than they do, but I don't know. I'm not even being that careful. Like, he's hitting me a ton of times. And I got the leather armor. I'm fine. With the bow, you do want to hold on to it as long as possible. So you see that uh, yellow circle that is shrinking. You want to make sure you hold on as long as possible because the smaller it is, the more damage it will do to your opponent. And probably two more hits. Oh, one more hit. Boom. And he's down. So make sure you do get his loot. He's saying no. He's very disappointed that he didn't win. There we go. Pick up all the stuff. So we got the hard antler. You need one of these to make a deer antler pickaxe, which is going to, is what going to allow you to mine uh, the tin and the copper in the black forest. And we got his trophy here. Uh, so you could either... Put it up on the wall once you get to the Iron Age, or for now, I would recommend actually going and putting it on the Summoning Stone. So let's do that real quick. All right, we have made it back to the Summoning Stones. I don't know what you really want to call this. Uh, we've talked about the different bosses that we're going to be fighting through this game. 
So all you do is you walk over to it, and if you push number seven when you're looking at the stone, it says you can't use the trophy on the sacrificial stone. You have to look at the trophy hook. Boom. Now after you've done it, you can always look at um, the trophy itself, and it shows you what it actually gives you. So this here is extremely useful when you are filling out your map, because uh, your jump stamina and your run stamina are both going to be down by 60%. So that's basically being able to run, you know, 160% of what you normally could. So that is a really, really nice bonus. Now you see down here in the bottom left corner, Ikethir is ready. You can only have one of those buffs at a time. So if you do have this one and this one unlocked and you want this one, you do have to come back here, click on this one before you can activate. So I would recommend probably having a portal somewhere close if you don't live nearby. Gonna record. Yep. All right, we have crafted our very first antler pickaxe. First thing I want to do is get rid of this rock. So we're just gonna smash it a few times. It takes a while. This is the first hammer. It's very weak. There we go. You can see we crush it. And we get some stone. So hopefully in a second the bees will be updating. All the bees are happy. Bees need more open space. Well, maybe let's just move them a little bit closer then. Bees are happy. There we go. Cool. Uh, there are a lot of little things you can do with the beehives. You can put them up on different levels uh, using these supports here. So you can have the one meter poles and you can have the two meter poles. So something you can do to give your, your builds a little bit of life if you want. Um, I personally really like when they're all in the two meter high ones, but it's everyone's opinion what they want to do. So play it how you like. That's what's important. I think this is going to be the end of this episode here. So please remember to hit that like button if you did like the video. And don't forget to comment what your favorite part of this video was. That's it for this time. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.